Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Howe, Director of the Atrial Fibrillation and Complex Arrhythmia Program at California Pacific Medical Center. I'd like to talk to you today about atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a very common arrhythmia, affecting somewhere between 3 to 5 million Americans and may reach 16 million by 2050. Atrial fibrillation is a chronic progressive disorder. Initially, it may start out very intermittent and last for very short periods of time. However, over time, it may increase in frequency and intensity and may reach a point where one is in atrial fibrillation continuously. However, to understand atrial fibrillation, we need to understand how the heart works and how the electrical system interacts with the heart. The heart is a pump. It's got a top chamber called the atrium and a bottom chamber called the ventricle. The ventricle is the squeezing chamber of the heart. So when you feel your heart beating, it's the bottom chamber squeezing. Mechanically, the top part fills the bottom and you really don't feel that. The heart has fuel lines. When those get plugged up, people have heart attacks. However, to coordinate how the heart functions, the heart has an electrical system. It has a pacemaker in the top right chamber that tells the heart when to beat, sensitive to adrenaline, so it'll speed up and slow down. The top part beats, and then there's one wire that connects top and bottom. So the heart goes top, bottom, top, bottom, nice and slow and regular. Atrial fibrillation is a very rapid rhythm in the top chamber of the heart, where the top chamber of the heart can be 300, 400 times a minute, quivering, not squeezing. And this wire lets every third, fifth, tenth beat through, and the bottom part beats irregularly and often very quickly. The lack of mechanical contribution from top to bottom, the irregularity, and the speed of the bottom chamber of the heart causes the heart to work less efficiently. And this is, can give people symptoms. Some people describe symptoms of palpitations, irregular heart beating, fatigue, shortness of breath, chest discomfort, and in severe circumstances, dizziness and even fainting. Besides the symptoms associated with atrial fibrillation, there are two other major complicating issues. The first is, because the top part of the heart is not squeezing, blood clots can form that can break off and go places that you don't want them to go and could cause a stroke. Secondly, if this wire conducts too many signals to the bottom chamber of the heart and the bottom chamber of the heart beats too quickly, it's like taking your car and pushing that accelerator down and redlining the car. The engine can just wear out and you could develop heart failure. There are three ways to manage atrial fibrillation. The first is if it's infrequent, asymptomatic, or one is too old or too sick to have more aggressive therapy, you can deal with the stroke risk by giving blood thinners, keep the heart rate slow, and let one live with the atrial fibrillation. A second option, particularly for those who are symptomatic with their arrhythmia, is to give drugs. And the drugs are designed to try and prevent the atrial fibrillation from starting. We do recognize, however, that in some patients, drugs make work, but they really work about 50 to 60% of the time. Some of our strongest drugs can be associated with toxicities if used for high doses for long periods of time, and a lot of other drugs can cause side effects. Because of the limitation of drugs and the issues with its efficacy, we've worked hard to try and understand atrial fibrillation and design a more definitive option. So the procedure that we performed involves isolating those areas so those signals cannot get into the heart and initiate arrhythmia. I use the analogy. If normal rhythm is a beautiful symphony, everyone should be listening to the director. However, if there is a French horn playing their own tune, or the door to the outside world is open, all the noise comes in and disrupts the normal rhythm. What we're trying to do with this procedure is eliminate that French horn, close those doors, so that everyone will listen to that director and there'll be nice, normal rhythm. Atrial fibrillation ablation entails accessing veins in the legs, sometimes one up in your neck, and pushing catheters up into the heart. Under x-ray and ultrasound guidance, we go from the top right chamber to the top left chamber. Our catheters have platinum electrodes, and we can map the electrical connections in and out of the pulmonary veins where the triggers are coming from that initiate atrial fibrillation. We can then target those connections, apply lesions, and electrically disconnect these areas from the atrium. So at the end of the procedure, there's no electrical movement in and out of the areas that start the atrial fibrillation in the vast majority of people. 
This procedure takes one to three hours. All the catheters are pulled out, and after an overnight stay, the patient walks out of the hospital. The heart heals over the next two to three months, but after the three months, we start assessing success, and our definition is freedom of arrhythmia off of drugs. The success with one procedure is 78%, and if it requires a second procedure, success rate can exceed 90%. We do recognize that this is an invasive procedure and there are always risks associated with it. However, with our experience, where we perform more than 450 atrial fibrillation ablations per year, as well as the use of special technology, intracardiac echocardiography, and CARDO3, which is a local GPS-like technology, we can customize the approach to patient-specific anatomy to provide a better, faster, and safer procedure. In addition, we've performed a number of research studies to, to show how we use anticoagulation to minimize the risk of complications. With our experience, use of technology, and protocols, the risk of complications with this procedure is less than 1%. I hope today that you've learned a little bit more about atrial fibrillation, which affects millions of Americans and will likely increase over the coming years. Atrial fibrillation ablation can be a very definitive option for treatment of this prevalent arrhythmia. I'm Dr. Stephen Howe, and now you know.